So just to do one more pretty straightforward example, this is from the same section, it's page 216, number 36. It says, use the second derivative test to find the extrema for the function. So we start by finding the critical points by setting y prime equal to zero. So 15x fourth minus 75x squared plus 60 equals zero. And we solve that by factoring. Um, notice you can factor out a 15 here. So uh, it would be a good idea to do that and in fact have um, x to the fourth uh, minus, uh, what's it gonna be, five x squared plus four equals zero. This is what we call uh, quadratic form. So we can factor it as x squared minus four x squared minus one equals zero. So you can just readily get from this that x equals plus or minus two from this factor and x equals plus or minus one from this factor. So this time we have uh, four different critical points. So for, we just te test each of them. So let's, uh, I'll take them in order. x equals negative two. Um, we're gonna do, oh, we need y double prime in order to do the second derivative test. So let's just put that first. So y double prime is, um, 60x cubed minus 150x. All right, so, oh, something seems funny here. Yeah, okay, all right, that's right. That's right. I thought I had something weird, but I guess not. So uh, y double prime of negative two, you know, we've got negative two, negative one, positive one, positive two, I'll just take them in increasing order. So y double prime of negative two is gonna be, um, you know, uh, I found this easier to tell whether I'm looking at a positive or negative by factoring this. You can factor this pretty easily as uh, 30x times 2, 2x squared minus 5, right? That'll give that 30x. All right, then when I do y, of, y prime of negative 2, all right, so I'm going to have a negative, And if I put negative 2 in here, I'm going to have 4 minus 5, which is negative. So I have a negative times a negative is a positive. So without working out what y pr double prime of negative two, I know that y double prime of negative two is positive. And then when I go to do y double prime of negative one, so see how the factoring form makes it sort of easier to do. I'm gonna have a negative times a negative again, wh which is a positive, which I don't like. I have negative two. Oh, when I put the negative two, I'm actually gonna have four times two, which is eight, eight minus three is eight minus five is three. So this will be positive. This will be negative for the negative two. I think that actually my y double prime of negative two is negative. All right. Now my, I said that was easier than I screwed it up. Uh, y double prime, of, but you won't because you're, you're, you're better than me at this kind of thing. So y double prime of negative, I have a negative times a negative, which is going to be positive. Y double prime of positive one, I'm going to have um, positive times, uh, this is going to be 2 minus 5, so it's going to be negative. So positive times a negative is going to be a negative. And then my y double prime of 2 is going to be uh, positive, and then this is going to be uh, 8 minus 5, so it's going to be positive, so I'm going to have a positive. All right, so notice that I didn't even bother to work out exactly what y double prime of each of these values is. I can already determine their sign by looking at the factored form. All right, but you can also just put in negative 2 and plug it out and see what you got. All right, so the, since this is a uh, negative, I know that y has a max at negative two. Oh, I guess I have to figure out the, the y coordinates of all these. That's gonna suck. All right, fine. I guess the, probably the easiest way to do that is gonna be to write it as a function. So let's clear this and do, uh, I was trying to avoid using the calculator, but I don't wanna do all these values um, using, um, by hand, so minus 25 uh, x cubed uh, plus, oops, let's see, see what a pain this is, delete, uh, plus 60 x plus 20. So it, here's maybe a, a nice calculator technique. If, if I want to evaluate that a bunch of times and I want to write y1 every time, I can also just graph it on a standard window. So do zoom six to graph it on a standard window. And then what I can do is just go into um, trace mode. Once it's done graphing, go to trace mode. Am I in trace mode? Yeah, I think I'm in trace mode. Okay. And then what I do is just uh, put, oh, but I needed y double 
yeah, I needed y of this, okay? So I need y of negative two. So I just uh, hit negative two, or not, not. Let's go back to the graph mode. There's an easy way to do this. Do you have to do x equals on this one? If I'm in trace mode, I think I can just hit a value, right? Like two? Yeah, enter. And I get two of 36, okay? So I know two is 36. So if I hit negative two, there we go. Okay, so negative two, y is four. So negative two, four. All right, this one, y double prime is greater than zero, so y has a min at negative one. So I can just hit negative one, enter. When I'm in trace mode, it tells me the y coordinate, negative 18. Negative 18, and then uh, y has a max, because uh, y double prime is less than zero, at one, so we'll put in one, I got 58, 58, and uh, y of two, so y has a min at two, so just hit two there, and I get 36, two, 36, all right? And the justification of all these is by second derivative test. And that's it for this problem. You know, so one thing that I notice is that, um, like, like when I made the mistake up here, the reason I knew I made a mistake is that by doing the x's consecutively, you can't have two maxes in a row without something in between them, if you think about it, right? I have a nice continuous, when I have a nice continuous function, all right, and this is a, a quintic, but this time it has four critical points, so it has four turning points, all right? You can't have a max and a max without a min in between them. So I knew it had to go max, min, max, min, or min, max, min, max. The mins and maxes have to alternate just logically from the way the graph looks. All right, so look for stuff like that. So there's another simple example. Next we'll do a slightly harder example.